now, Tile Chance. About 10 minutes ago, James, the game was kind of stagnated and semi died. Yeah, base would have had a lot of the ball, but as we said, not a lot in the way of chances, to be fair. Terry Hawkridge battling up against Michael Turner. Hawkridge can't win that ball as um, Hodgson will come in and intervene. Plays a nice one two with Henderson. And Hodgson will play it across to Sawyer. Looking for any run he can find. Sees Ramsey wide right. Uses him. Nice infield ball to Henderson. Henderson in the 18. Blocked by Don Roma. Back towards the Morpeth player. Shouts for a penalty given. I thought he won the ball there. I also did. Does his standard hands on hips towards the edge of the area, Donaldson? Quite a central run. Does a stutter. Lower bottom corner. Sends Adam Collin the wrong way. That is a goal for Morpeth. And a brilliant penalty. Good penalty. Massively against the run of play. But uh, we've had seen that. Sure, last week as well. I think I, I wasn't there, but yes. by the sounds of it, it was all Baseford, and it's a penalty that cost him. And it's so far, it's the exact same story. It's an unfortunate one, but these are happen. Taken quickly by Sayer, outwards towards Ramsey. Ramsey's up against Richards and Betts. The deflection goes back out to Sayer, then to Donaldson, back to Sayer, back to Walton, inside towards Henderson. Little flick on. And that is a through ball and a secondary goal. But wait, the flag is up. Baseford have a lot off. Because Morpeth just passed one, two, three, four and immediately carved them apart. It would have been a magnificent goal, wouldn't it? Yeah. Honestly, that would have been sensational. Fires Foley. Out wide to Walton. Walton put a cross in. Goes through everybody but five is Ramsey on the far right hand side. Five, now he finds, say, a five yards in field. Go all the way out towards Christopher Reed. Reed skips past Matt Thornhill and wins a corner for Morpeth in the process. Morpeth, sorry. Here comes Sayers' corner. Punched out by Adam Collin. Chipped back in. Cleared off the line by Brad Gascoigne and then eventually cleared all the way across. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen in the professional game. It's not easy. Noble takes it across. Deflects off the Adam Collin forward punch. Now Tal tries and takes the secondary one. Foley completely clears it. And then Tal just goes straight through the back of him and concedes a free kick. It is going to be Noble to take it again. Noble flicks it in towards the near post. Cleared on everybody, but Adam Collin grabs that one safely. Calmly. Can always re rely on Collin. We have to go inside. Here's Terry Hawkridge. Plays forward to Kate Richards. Richards beats one man. Looking to beat two. Clip down. That's going to be a yellow card. No, it's not. The referee... <laughs> <laughs> the referee looked to go into his pocket and then started finger-wagging at um, Joseph Walton, the ever-aging defender. Wilson plays it into the area. Not headed down completely. Step forward. That's Matt Thornhill. That's a goal. That's an equaliser. James Rich called it. Absolutely beautiful. Celebrate with the fans. That's exactly what football's all about, my friend. Steve Chester is absolutely delighted on that bench. High fives all around. He knew they needed a goal here. It was so important and they've got one. Captain Fantastic. Delivers again. And base for United have life here in Morpeth. Brilliant stuff from the captain. The ball was loose in the area. Just stabs it home. Brilliant, brilliant stuff in the rain up here in Newcastle. I don't know what else to say. Pure emotion. I'm hoping the microphones are picking up the, the this eight fans that have travelled and they're drowning out the the hundred odd Morpeth that fans with their noise. Ramsey again. I always forget Ramsey's name. It's him that's been blanking me so far today. Is He's one, not been blanky blanking. Here's one for you before off time. Is that the first goal Matt Thorne has scored this season that will actually get credited to him? Yes, yes, it, <laughs> yes, it is, my friend. With that, that's the halftime whistle gone. Miss for United were picked back in the first half by a penalty that was dubiously awarded. Declan Dunn, uh, sorry, Don Roma's still arguing about the penalty, by the way, um, was converted by number eight, uh, sorry, number 10, Ryan Donaldson. There's something to ask Jets at the end of the game. And Bopeth gets back underway, but the referee wants to restart as both Kane Richards and Rev James were in Bopeth's half by the time the ball had been kicked. 
Yeah, I know we will start that. And all guns blazing, you'd have to all, say. Yeah, all, all up for this. Here's Noble, who I must say st did not go in with the rest of the boys. He stayed out and warmed up for the for the full time intermission. Here's Matt Thornell dancing past one, going inside to Kane Richards. Richards looking for his options. He'll dance past one himself. Sees the run of Rev James, plays it over the top. Rev James is in the area, up against Lawson. Lawson wins that fight and then is shoved into. He, he was shoulder barged into the goalkeeper Lawson there was Rev James. It wasn't intentional what he did there. But potentially Lawson's in a lot of pain. He's trying to turn back and, and play it to your man, especially when there's two other players in the box with you. Forward by Matt Thornell. He beats a man, can shoot, does shoot. Yeah, go over the bar for a goal kick. He Set definitely one of could. these fast players in, but he definitely could. Chooses not to. Well, it's not the style of play Baseford have been utilising this season, is it? No. They've opted to pass it along the floor, which has worked very well. Here's Terry Hawkridge across the halfway line, using Kane Richards one-two with Matt Thornell. Now set Richards in. Richards is in the area, opts to try and curl it round to the wall to the back post, but that will run out for a goal kick to Baseford. That's where Kane, uh, Rev James should have been. Well, I can't tell if that was a shot or a cross, really. I thought it was a cross because of the outside of his foot, yeah, you see. but I think it would have been a difficult one for him to get to. For sentiment, this isn't just to make his trip worthwhile. He's genuinely come on to make an impact here. And there he does immediately make an impact. Pips Noble for the ball. Richards plays it forward for Hawkridge. Nice little dump off for Matt Thornell. Back to Hawkridge. He's wide right. Doesn't have any support from Owen Betts yet. Will turn. Pirouette. Now give it to Rev James. Rev James can turn himself. He's into the area. Shoots. All the way for the back post, but Lewis Rock can't get there. That would have been perfect for the youngster. Started to move off to finish it off as well. Oh, that is so unlucky. This young core of Baseford United players still producing talent after talent after talent. Long ball outside of the... To try and find Christopher Reid. Owen Betts on interceptor. That is a horrendous challenge. By Liam Henderson. The referee has a decision to make here. He's just pulled out a yellow card. Yeah, I don't, that was, I don't think that was ever going to be a red, realistically. It's very late. Um, obviously, the surface doesn't help either with the speed that you're going into it. I think that probably made the challenge worse than Henderson in, in, intended for it. But, yeah, it's not it's not a great challenge at all. hope Declan Dunn's all right. He has pulled out the yellow card and it is only going to be a bookie. Mr. Reid had advanced. Quick free kick taken. Henderson fires it. Ah, that's 2 on Wapper. Basement fell asleep. Henderson pounced. Stabbed it goalwards. There's nothing else to say there, James. It's an appalling goal to give away. It is really very is. disgustingly bad. Obviously, great quick thinking by the, the two Morpeth players, but you know, the, what on earth are you thinking there? You've got the tallest man outfield stood in front of you. How do you not notice that he's suddenly gone? Wilson's in a bit of space. There are people arriving in the box. Lewis Rock's one of them. He's right at the back stick. Manages to latch onto the cross. Has Owen Betts. Betts takes a touch. Gives it to Declan Dunn. Dunn's in some shooting space. We'll find Matt Thornhill. Thornhill shoots. That's poor from the captain though. And it will just trickle on through to Dan Lawson. But again, it's brilliant from base for Brad Gascoigne. Gascoigne's going to utilise it towards the right-hand side. That's where Don Romer is. Five yards from the touchline. Has Lewis Rock running, making a run. And Matt Thornham. Gives it to Owen Betts. Betts back to Romer. Inside to Rock. Nice touch for Matt Thornham, the captain. Thornham's brought down and that's a free kick for Baseford United there. This is prime Steph Galinsky area for it to get across in, but unfortunately he's not available. Corner. Flicked in towards the back stick. A little bit of a, a couple of challenges there. Don Romer's claiming he was fouled. But Morpeth carry it out. Richards can't win the secondary header. <coughs> Flicked on. Only a couple of minutes remaining here at Morpeth. Baseford still trailing. Nice ball by Terry Hawkwich. Three added minutes to be played. Three minutes left. Can Baseford find an equaliser? Declan Dunn. Stabbing it forward. Kane Richards across to Terry Hawkridge. Hawkridge further across to Don Roma. He has Owen Betts in front of him. Ball goes in over everybody. And Rev James just needed to get a touch goalward on it. Instead it goes off his knee and out for a goal kick. 
I, I really hope that he couldn't see that. I really hope that he was blind. That his his vision of the ball was miscued by the the jumping defender because that is as good a chance as you're going to get. Really, perfect delivery from Dom Roma picks him out of the back post and he just doesn't react. The ball hits him and goes behind. He hasn't had a hand in either goal unless he won the penalty. I'm not sure if he did or not, but he's, he's been absolutely fantastic. Rano in bets riot when when Morpeth have been on top. Um, the constant threat, so tricky on the ball. There's a full-time whistle there. There's for United Trail. What is going on there? That is just unnecessary. I hope somebody caught that because we completely missed it. That is absolutely I unnecessary. I'll give you the gossip, don't you worry. And there is just an all-out brawl here at the end of it. Every single player, it's a complete bench clearer for Morpeth. Kim Richards has completely lost it. Owen Betts has as well. There's a goalkeeper, a manager, everything. The referee has some serious sorting out here to do because that is disgraceful at the end of a football game. James, talk us through what happened there. Yeah, the ball's, the ball's gone out for a throw-in as the ref's blown full-time and the Morpeth player, as Owen Betts is obviously trying to run to get it, the Morpeth player's just stood directly in front of him as he's running. Betts has gone clattering off him, which... It happens in football, it's, it, it's, you shouldn't really do it, but it happens and Betts has really not reacted well to it. He's gone over, you know, he clearly feels... Clearly, clearly feels... Uh, yeah, he was, he, was, he, was, it, yeah. he was pretty angry with, with it and he goes and pushes him and that sparks a brawl because it's obviously right in front of the Morpeth bench. They're going to jump up and defend their players. They're well within the right to and it's it's ugly scenes. It could, it could have been avoided, don't get me wrong. But it's, it, it's, he, he, it's not great what happened to him but he, he probably shouldn't have reacted like that I imagine the the result in the back of his head has probably just tilted him over the edge a bit because he's not like that at all is he here at Morpeth anyway base for United Trail and I've lost the game 2-1 a first half penalty for Morpeth gave them the lead before Matt Thornall equalised from a scramble in the area free kick and then a second half second half goal by Henderson, when Baseford United switched off, has gifted Morpeth the goal that's put them ahead in this game and, and taken all three points home. 